Good morning. Welcome, welcome. It is Tuesday, the second Tuesday of Lent. Um, we're in Matthew 23, verses 1 to 12 today. Matthew 23, verses 1 to 12. That's so nice to see the same people come every day. That really means a lot to me. I'm happy to have somebody to chat with. Hi. Hi, Martha. Good morning. All right, let's start with the Holy Spirit prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, hello, hello. Good morning. All right. Matthew 23, right at the, right at the top. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. <clears throat> they tie up heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others. For they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, but for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, and all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. Okay, here we are again with the Pharisees. Um, and I think that Jesus spends so much time talking about the Pharisaical behaviors of the Pharisees. Yeah. <laughs> because he wants us to have a very firm grasp on the idea that um, being a hypocrite is a primary sin. Like that, that's a, that's a big deal. Um, and it's easy to fall into it. So <clears throat> he's making it, it clear, you know, what, what's what here. So he says, he starts off by saying, um, they sit on Moses' seat. So listen to what they're saying. So he's not... He's not objecting to the words that are coming out of their mouths, to the teaching. Um, and he's saying, you know, that, that Moses had truth. And, um, and we see here the, the phylacteries and the fringes are from um, Deuteronomy. The phylactery was like a, a cubicle leather box that was strapped to the left arm and then... Um, and then in, in pointed towards their heart and they were supposed to wear it in morning prayer. Um, and, and it was heavy and, and they kept making it. And, oh, and in the box was scripture. So there were scrolls of scripture in the box. What Bible did I just read for? From I read from, where am I today? I'm in this Bible right here, which is the NRSV um, Catholic Bible. It's a journaling Bible. Um, so, so the phylacteries were kind of burdensome heavy um, leather boxes, bulky leather boxes on their arms. Um, and then they, they put these fringes on the bottoms of their robes and made them ever longer. So, so they've done this, but, and he's not so much saying don't do this because truly the phylacteries were, in, were part of the mosaic tradition. He's saying, don't do it, why? So that your deeds can be seen by others. Um, they love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect. They're doing it for that purpose. They're doing it to have the seat of honor, to be greeted with respect. Um, and Lent calls us to, to certain practices. Um, we, we hope to adapt certain practices during Lent, to, to adopt them, to do them, um, to add something maybe to our prayer routine. But, but why? 
not to gain the respect of other people, but to grow in friendship with Jesus, to have a true conversion of heart so that, so that we um, become more and more like him. And he was a servant. He was humble. He served. So these people um, who want to be greeted with respect, this, this line right here is a zinger. Um, they do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the, the places of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be respect, re greeted with respect to the marketplaces and to have people call them la rabbi. But just before that, they tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear. So the phylacteries actually were heavy burdens. Um, but so there's a double entendre there. Tie up heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. So they themselves are unwilling to, to help somebody else. They can lay all these burdens down um, on the shoulders of other people, but they are not willing to serve those people. Um, and that's exactly the opposite of what Jesus was. Um, Jesus came with mercy and he came to serve. Um, and I think that's really, really important. Their knowledge of the law, the, the pharisaical knowledge of the law, um, that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to know the law. Um, and, and Jesus says that, you know, do whatever they teach and follow it. Their knowledge of the law is not the problem. The, the problem is that that knowledge puffed them up. It made them proud and not humble. Um, so they became less and less like God, ironically, the more and more they knew the law um, because they don't know the heart of Jesus and they don't understand um, that, that the true living out of the law is being humble and serving. Um, so there are a couple things to pull away from here. Um, <clears throat> the first is, and this goes both ways. Be careful how you judge people on their outward appearances, right? We have to be careful not to see somebody who's doing all the right things and assume that our heart's in the right place because it might be that it's not. And that's a good way to be led astray by someone who appears to be holy but isn't truly holy. So that's the first thing, and that's a matter of true personal discernment. Um, and then the second thing that we really want to think about um, as we prop up on our Bibles today to um, Matthew 23, the first 12 verses, um, <clears throat> really think about why you do the religious things you do. So um, the laws and the devotions, um, why are you doing those things? Are you doing them so that you can appear even to yourself to be pious? Um, or are you doing them to grow closer in friendship with God? Like, what is the reason for the, the things that you do, um, the religious devotions, the religious actions? We talked, I think maybe yesterday, I'm not sure. Um, we talked about how sometimes we do the thing of love. We act as if we love, like do the loving thing, and then the love comes with it. So sometimes we can do the devotion because we desire to love him more. But we need to be careful that that's why we're doing it, that we're doing it to draw us into a closer relationship with God and not so that we get the best seat in the synagogue. All right, prop open your Bibles, Matthew 23, 1 to 12. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for coming. Bye.